hey guys welcome back to another video thank you so much for clicking on to the video um this is a week of eating vegetarian meals or meatless meals or it was a f a week of no meat or free meat week <laughs> whatever it is that you want to call it so first on our menu is going to be um sweet potato i just put that in an oven um added a wrap that i had made uh, previously um and then now i'm going to cut cauliflower steaks this is a medium sized cauliflower so i normally get about two steaks out of it if you can get a, a bigger one then if like me there's three of us uh, i would prefer to get three steaks but i always get two which i don't mind and then the other ones i, I don't mind even if they are not steaks but yeah majority of the time he's not really a cauliflower person but he did not have a choice this week so our marinade is going to be paprika onion powder garlic powder portuguese chicken spice and then olive oil onto there and then i added yellow salt i did not add any herbs i feel like majority of the time when you add herbs onto something that you're going to pan fry they tend to burn the herbs and the and the chili flakes so i didn't add that onto my marinade i normally add herbs in something that i have bald or i don't know you know what i mean if it's not fresh herbs i don't add them because they don't not all the time though don't quote me <laughs> when you see me doing it so once that was done i proceeded into sprinkling that on top of the bro broccoli cauliflower steaks and then rubbing the marinade onto the steak and um set that aside let it sit for a little bit and we are going to cut our mushroom which is going to be our sauce for this meal <music>
most of my sauce, I start them with butter, real butter, not margarine, butter. And then I added mushroom. Always try to fry your mushroom first because they tend to... I don't know how to, they tend to get watery after being put into the pot. So you let them fry up until they, they simmer down and then you can add your onion if you don't want to take them out. So I figured that the butter was not enough. I felt it wasn't enough. So I added a little bit more and I added a little bit of, of flour. I eyeballed it. Basically, you can say one and a half tablespoon of flour, added my yellow seasoning and I added my seasoning, which was onion powder uh, and, and, and I added onion powder, garlic powder and herbs and I added a little bit of dark soy sauce and I proceeded into adding my water. You do not have to use water. You can use vegetable stock or chicken stock or beef stock, whichever way or whichever one that you prefer. But I went with water on this one. Adjusted my seasoning because I still felt like there wasn't enough. And then I thought my sauce was not thick enough. So I did add a little bit of flour mixed with water still. And then I was satisfied with that. And this is how the sauce looks like. This was an easy meal that didn't require a lot of effort. And I cooked my brown rice off camera. Um, I mean, you cook it according to the package. And you can do this with any other rice of your choice. But on this day, I decided to go with my brown rice and then now we are going to plate it the sweet potato is ready the cauliflower steak is ready and then the sauce is ready this is how our first meal of the week went like it was brown rice cauliflower steak mushroom sauce not the creamy one and then sweet potato they call it jewel or yellow whichever way you call it that's what we had for dinner on this day and i loved it <laughs> The sauce for today will be started pretty much the same way that we started the the yesterday sauce. The only difference is that on this one we are using oil and I'm using African stir fry from McCain. I have let it sit on the counter for two hours because I wanted it to defrost a little bit. Why did I do that? Because I want to be I want them to still remain crunchy and still retain some for some sort of a cult of a color 
because if not then they if they are not defrosted you end up overcooking them and then the the vegetables will be soggy the color will be too dark you know all those things that are not nice when it comes to vegetables so i let it defrost a little bit on the counter because i still wanted them to be somewhat green you know so after frying the mushroom and the and the onion on the other pot um i proceeded into adding tomato paste and canned tomatoes i do cut them this way because they are whole you can cut them on a plate on a side if you don't mind and guys please do excuse my extractor is not working properly i think it needs to be cleaned out a little bit so this is our sauce for a day you can season it anyhow you want and this is our vegetable my african vegetable if you've been here for a while you know my old time spices the only difference this time is that i do i have been using a, a portuguese chicken spice as well i do have those occasions where i have you know a certain spice that i'm in love with so the, the sweet potatoes the purple sweet potatoes i cooked them the same way that i cooked yesterday's ones in an oven with a little bit of oil and a bit of salt can you see that my vegetables still have a bit of color even though they were frozen and they were still a bit crunchy so for me that was a win because one of the reasons i really don't like um frozen vegetables is because they tend to overcook so but i figured a way to use them defrost them a little bit so that you don't lose all those crunchiness and the color and this is a meal that we had on our second day and it was yummy as always <music> If you are new here, this is how I preserve my vegetables. Um, they don't have long shelf. I buy them from a market. So I wrap, I wash them and wrap them in paper towel and put them in a console jar or a glass jar and put it, put them in a fridge. So I've had them in a fridge for two weeks now. If they were not in a paper towel, if they were not wrapped in a paper towel and in a jar, they would have gone off by now. But because I, I wash them and wrap them in a paper towel and then put them in a jar and put them in a fridge, they still look fresh. And that's what I'm looking for because I really hate throwing away food. I don't like throwing away food. I don't like throwing away anything to be precise. So here I am cutting, do we call them leeks? Yeah. And then spring onion, um, chilies, garlic, onion. I'm cutting them roughly. Uh, as you can see i'm not peeling anything excuse that paper towel there as i'm editing now i'm seeing how untidy it looks i should have taken that to the bin but i didn't but that is okay it's part of home cooking it's not always perfect guys we don't i i strive to feed my family and to take care of my family it's never so much about <laughs> the aesthetic but i'm working on it <laughs> so as you, you've seen i've cut everything roughly added oil uh, i added uh, fennel seeds allspice berries a uh, bay leaf and the last of my star anise and i added onion seeds as well 
fry that a little bit i did a chicken stock just lost the footage of that and added everything in there onto the pot stayed in making sure that it's well combined with the vegetables i'm pretty sure you're asking yourself what the hell <laughs> And I added a can of tomatoes into there, stir that in as well. As I've said earlier on, my extractor is not working that well. My stove is not high. And I added 50 grams of tomato paste, stir that in as well. Onion powder, paprika, garlic powder stir that in once more making sure that the vegetables are well coated and added my salt and this is about quarter cup of tomato sauce all gold tomato sauce i just rinsed it with water to make sure that everything came out I added it in there and I added 500 ml of water and another 250 ml basically i did add one liter of water into this let it cook adjust your seasoning if you have to and i added crushed black pepper stir that in and i'm going to let it simmer until it is ready to save this is how it looks after simmering away for two hours the intention was to sieve it using this cloth and the sieve and the sauce or the broth or whatever this is the soup was too thin for my liking so i took out the cloth and started straining it once more and i was happy with how the the my tomato sauce my tomato soup looked like stained it a bit more and i was happy with what i got it was so tasty and i added my pasta onto there or should i call them noodles whichever way you want to call them and added the soup onto the noodles guys guys you know meatless meals are not so bad hey <laughs> i love my meat but this was a week that i enjoyed the meals so much and then i added a little bit of basil there on top i was trying to be bougie <laughs> so this was our meal number two for the day still no meat no meat and my family were not complaining no they were not complaining at all so this is our third night where we had pasta and tomato soup did you see how easy that was it was so easy to bake nothing complicated I just heated my oil there and then I added onion, uh, leek or green onion, whichever way you call, spring onion and garlic. I'm frying that I'm, up until it's somewhat soft and I'm adding my chicken, Portuguese chicken spice onto there. Stir that in. We are on day number four is day number four onion powder you know i can't tell the difference between onion powder and garlic powder i can smell them <laughs> onion powder garlic powder and turmeric into there that's my seasoning i don't know i find turmeric kind of grainy in my food 
i don't know about you guys so i always put a little bit of it i don't put a lot and then i added another can of no not another can a can of tomato i did cut it off camera stir that in making sure that everything is well combined i boiled my lentils earlier on drain them set them aside i just added possibly two cups or two and a half cups but two cups i think it was, this was two cups stir that into the relish that i had just made and i added about 25 grams of tomato paste adjusted my seasoning i added 25 grams of tomato paste because i didn't want it to be too pungent is it the correct word that one and added a little bit of water i still felt like it wasn't enough and i did add a little bit more let it cook a little bit and it was ready this was our day four meal which was basmati rice and lentil stew or just lentils i don't know what you call them lentil stew or just lentils that's what we had on day four mm -hmm. This is day five and i was making breadsticks uh this is 500 mils of lukewarm water and i added two teaspoons of himalayan salt at three i think two was not enough because it did not dissolve the way it was supposed to so three i think three will be sufficient for this recipe and add six in a bowl measure six cups of bread flour add a bit of onion and garlic powder and a bit of parsley and two tablespoons of sugar 10 grams of yeast and one and a half cup of grated cheese if you want it slightly sweeter you can do two and a half teaspoon of sugar tablespoon of sugar and add four tablespoons of olive oil and proceed to adding your water bit by bit don't pour the entire 500 mils in there add it bit by bit if it's not enough i added i ended up adding about 650 mils onto this measurement of six flour six flour six cups of flour but add bit by bit guys bit by bit until you get to the consistency that you want
this is after four hours of proving after one hour i did punch it down needed after another hour punch it down and needed and i did let it prove for another hour three hours gonna lap and then now we are shaping the breadsticks they're supposed to be skinny I can never be able to get my breadstick skinny. I'll try to perfect that. But I do feel like I like mine this way. Brady, if that's the weight, if there's a weight like that. I don't like them too skinny and crisp, but, but I still want to taste a bit of breadness into there. But the originality of breadsticks, they have to be very thin and crunchy or crispy or crusty whichever way you wanna call them and you can i'm i'm not measuring i'm just eyeballing the sizes that i want and we're going to shape that bake it 880 degrees up until they are golden brown some oven will call 490 degrees it always depends on the type of oven you you use I'm sprinkling semolina at the bottom of the of the breadsticks and I'm going to sprinkle it more on top of um, the breadsticks. I've seen someone using maize meal. I've never used maize meal. I always use a semolina. I don't know how the maize meal works, but semolina it's fine enough for me. That's what I use when I make English muffins and the in the breadsticks. I took half of the of the piece and put it in a blender with the soup uh, and we are going to blend it a little bit the reason maybe let me not say half I took three quarter of the piece put it in a blender we are going to blend that with the soupy part of the soup and then I'll put the remaining quarter into it. This pen was my favorite. <laughs> it was my favorite. It was somewhat decent. <laughs> and this is what we had, guys. Soup with breadsticks. Simple, yummy, no need for meat. It was still a meatless day on day five.
this one here is a meal that actually taught me not to second guess myself i sliced my potatoes seasoned them put them in an oven with the robot peppers and we are going to be peeling the peppers um, i made roasted peppers so this is going to be part of the meal as i was doing this i thought in my head is this going to be enough for my family is it going to be enough for my husband and theo and i second guessed myself right you'll see why <laughs> so yeah my potatoes have been in the oven they are ready my peppers are ready i'm going to peel them i don't know why i didn't wait for them to cool down I'm such an impatient person. So, yeah. So, I did peel them, took out the seeds, and set them aside. So since I felt like my husband and Theo were not going to be full from what I had in mind, I remember that I had rice and lentils that were left over from some of the meals that I've made over the during the week, and I dished that up for them. So it was rice, lentils, and the mushroom, and the roasted peppers. The roasted peppers, it, I seasoned it with salt, vinegar, and a little bit of oil. That was it. And then I added the, the egg onto there, and the potatoes that I had sliced up. You can just see, even when I'm putting them here, that they don't look, you know, they are out of place because that was not the initial idea of this dish. But I felt like they were not going to be happy. Kara, stop! How? I felt like they were not going to be full. So I decided to improvise. And then I did add avocado there as well and the egg so there was a, a, a dressing which has an a, which has a yogurt dressing that you will see on the next bowl which was for theo this one was for my husband this one was for theo i feel like this should have been for my husband 
<laughs> because I had already given him. When you are married to a content creator, hmm, you'll suffer. So now, after seeing that it wasn't working, I'm like, I know I'm going to be full with this. Hence, I thought about it. So I'm going to do what I had in my mind when I made this dish. It is still a meatless dinner. So I put two slices of potatoes on my plate and a sliced half avocado onto there. I'm basically making a potato tower. I don't know if there's such a thing, but I just thought that's the only thing the only word that I can come up with. That's what, when I thought about it, this is how I wanted it to be. That's what I vis I envisioned in my head, in my mind, how it's supposed to look like. So it's two slices of potato, half avocado, sliced, and the roasted um peppers i'm building my tower man you know and as i'm doing this i can see that i should have gone with this they were not going to be full but they could have went for seconds ne? and then i put my mushrooms on top as well i'm a lover of mushrooms i love 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 mushrooms I don't know. I cannot explain my love for mushrooms, but I love, I'm in love with mushrooms. And I put my egg on top. That trickier water and what, what, is to make sure that your, your eggs retain the, that whiteness, the yellowness, and it doesn't burn on the side, you know. And then I drizzle my yogurt dressing. Onto the top, I asked the to make his lemon yogurt seasoning and herbs. And I did add that sosignana from the roasted peppers. And that was my meal. Doesn't it look gorgeous? Is it not beautiful? This was so, so, so delicious. This is the one that I enjoyed the most throughout the entire week so i think it deserved to close the week thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoy this don't forget to give us a thumbs up don't forget to comment if you have not subscribed kindly do so i will see you on my next upload bye